This is a monkey. He's just been told by a bunch of researchers that he needs to write the complete works of Shakespeare. The monkey said, this is impossible. How am I supposed to do this? There is not enough time in the universe. The researcher said, don't worry about it. We'll make it easier for you. We'll let you ignore various bits of punctuation and whether the letters are upper or lower case. And the most important thing, we'll give you an infinite amount of time. The monkey thought about the request and said, nothing. He's a monkey. He doesn't talk. The monkey starts typing away. He can type 31 characters in total. Every second, he's typing one character. The probability for typing just the first two matching characters is that times that, which is that. The first three matching characters, that would be that. The first four matching characters, that would be that. All five million characters in the complete works of Shakespeare, pretty low. That would be that. However, given an infinite amount of time, that monkey will type the complete works of Shakespeare, and he's going to do it an infinite number of times. That is, assuming that he is, in fact, typing randomly. This is a five-page document that was typed by macaque monkeys from Paint and Zoo over the course of a week. You can see that there are certain characters that are repeated much more often than other characters, but that's not really the problem. The problem is they eventually destroyed the computer and started using it as a toilet. Turns out the probability of them destroying whatever it is they're typing on is much higher than them typing anything resembling Shakespeare's. But the infinite monkey thought experiment is still a good base that will allow us to answer the question, is anything possible? Right now, data from the Planck and WMAP probes show that our observable universe, the 93 billion light years in diameter sphere that we are the center of which is extremely uniform in its structure, as in, wherever you go in the universe, it should look relatively the same to other parts of the universe. The data also shows that our universe could be flat with almost no curvature. And based on that, the entire universe could actually be infinite in extent with an infinite number of galaxies, an infinite number of stars, and an infinite number of planets. Now, this might be just a sampling issue, but that's a discussion for another video. For the purposes of this video, let's assume that our universe, at this point in time, is in fact infinite in extent. In a universe that is infinite in extent, any event that has a probability higher than zero must happen, and must happen infinitely so. This means right now there is not only one or two or three monkeys that just completed typing up the complete works of Shakespeare. There is an infinite number of monkeys that just did the same thing. With that said, let's delve a bit deeper into the subject. Right now, around this many light years away, in a uniform infinite universe, there is a good chance you will, you will find, find an almost exact copy of, of yourself. yourself. Around this many light years away, there is a good chance you'll find a 100 light years radius sphere that's almost exactly the same as the 100 light years radius sphere around us. And around this many light years away, there's a good chance you'll find a volume of space as large as our observable universe that has almost the same exact particle configuration. Notice how so far I've been saying there's a good chance you'll encounter one of those things. The problem with probability by its nature is that there's no guarantee that you'll encounter something after a certain distance or after a certain period of time. Let me give you an example. If you look at the following diagram, the first circle is around 10 light years away from Earth. The second one is that times itself a thousand times, so that's 10 to the power of a thousand. And the circle after that is that times itself a thousand times, so that's 10 to the power of a million, and so on and so forth. The weird thing is, there is a chance that you may encounter your almost exact copy right next door in the Andromeda galaxy. The chance at that point would be very, very low, but it is possible. As you go further and further and further, you should have a higher and higher chance for you to find your almost exact copy. After you pass this area, you start to get a really good chance to get an almost exact copy of yourself. And as you go further and further, there should be more and more copies because the chance is increasing more and more and more. It's actually much more than what this diagram shows you. It grows much larger than that, but you get the idea. This actually presents 
somewhat of a weird paradox because of this dynamic. As I've said, in a universe that is infinite, any event that has a probability higher than zero must happen and must happen infinitely so. This means there is an infinite, almost exact copies of yourself. This is how it gets weird. Imagine that every one of those copies is trying to find their own copy and they are going through the same exercise we just went through earlier. Certain copies will actually not find any copies of themselves anywhere within this distance. Why? Because there's a chance for that to happen. And certain copies will find their exact copies all within a very close area, close to them and nowhere in that huge distance outside. Why? Because there's a chance for that to happen. And in both cases, this is happening infinitely so. It actually gets a bit more weird than that. Right now, in the generally accepted model of an ever-expanding universe where it goes through several stages until it reaches a state of heat death, maximum entropy where no more work can be extracted from it, probabilities also change during this evolution. And that presents a number of interesting things, especially if the universe is infinite in extent. Let me give you an example. Right now, stars are forming at only 3% the rate of their formation at their peak 11 billion years ago. This means since that time, the probability for star formation became less and less and less. Across a uniform infinite universe, this means that you had an infinite number of stars at the peak and their infiniteness became less and less and less. The weird thing is that once the probability for star formation reaches zero, if you think about it, it seems as if you transition from an infinite number of stars forming to zero stars almost immediately. Eventually, the probability for stars existing themselves is likely to become zero. And any event that depends on the existence of stars, such as life and therefore monkeys and therefore monkeys typing up the complete works of Shakespeare also become impossible events even though they were happening infinitely so before. These paradoxical situations can somewhat be resolved if you think about the following. Even in an infinite universe, is it really wrong to say that there are more fundamental particles than there are stars. They're both infinite, except stars are always made up of fundamental particles. Therefore, you should have more fundamental particles than there are stars. If you accept the idea that infinities can be larger than other infinities, then you can say high probability events happen more infinitely than low probability events. And that changes depending on the way probability changes for those particular events during the evolution of the universe. So with that said, is anything possible? If you wanted to answer this question, all you have to do is take a look at the life of our universe from the very first moments of its existence until the end, probably its hate death. And then what you need to do is determine every single event that will have a probability higher than zero. And now you have a collection of events. This collection is everything that is possible. Anything outside of this collection is impossible. However, there is still a way for some of those impossible events to happen. They just won't ever happen in our universe. For that, we need to jump into the multiverse. Imagine that our universe is a video game, one that has the same number of dimensions that we do, three spatial dimensions, one time dimension. Now imagine other video games that can have the same kinds of dimensions, or they can have more or less. They also have different laws and rules, slightly different laws and rules. All of those video games will be part of a multiverse. Now the multiverse in this case is a set all made from one common source. All of the games that you've seen come from one engine, and that is the Unity game engine. And in a sense, it is what is making these universes. It is the multiverse for those video games. 
Now let's imagine the same but with actual universes. Under cosmic inflationary theory, it is possible that in the fraction of a second after the Big Bang, certain parts expanded too fast and that created bubbles. Each bubble is its own universe and each bubble could have the same kinds of dimensions that we have in our own universe or they could have different dimensions. It's also possible that each one of those bubbles have different physical constants than the physical constants we have in our own universe. This changes the answer to the question, is anything possible? In those universes, it is actually possible that impossible events across the lifetime of our own universe would be possible in those universes. Changing physical constants even slightly can have dramatic effects on the way a universe works and that changes what is and what is not possible in those universes. For example, if protons were only 0.2% heavier than they are right now, atoms will become very unstable. If the electromagnetic force was around 4% weaker than it is right now, it would be difficult to imagine what normal stars would look like. If the weak interaction was much weaker, the most basic atom, hydrogen, would not exist. And therefore, the periodic table makes absolutely no sense. If you are able to examine all of those universes and all the possible configuration of events that could happen in those universes, good luck with that, by the way, now you have created a much larger set of possible events than the possible events within our own universe. In the video game analogy, that would be the equivalent of describing every single possible video game that can be made using the Unity game engine and describing everything that could happen in those video games. And in essence, that is the answer to the question, is anything possible? But let's go back to our own cozy universe for a second, because even events that are impossible across the lifetime of our universe, they have zero probability of ever happening, can still happen. At this point, you might be asking, uh, Sharky, what are you smoking and why do you never change your shirt? And to that, I would say, what does that have to do with anything? The point is, as part of quantum mechanics, there is an interpretation called the many worlds theory. Under this interpretation, the famous Schrodinger's cat experiment, where the cat exists as both dead and alive until it is observed by you, in this interpretation, it is different. Once the cat is observed, the universe splits. One where the cat is alive, there's a version of you that saw the cat alive, and one is a version where there is another version of you that saw the cat dead. This completely flips the question, is anything possible? On its head. Let's assume for a moment that the universe splits at every quantum action and never converges back in on itself. Let's just go with this assumption right now. Can you tell me this? What are the chances that a coin would never flip on its head anywhere in the universe across its entire lifetime? Well, I just did it right now, so sorry about that. The event is now impossible. This branch of the universe is not going to be the branch where that actually happens. But in one particular branch, you can imagine a coin every time landing on its tail, never landing on its head. Can you imagine being a species that is trying to land a coin on its head and never ever achieving that, even though they know that it is possible for that to happen? How would they react? Basically what this means is that there are certain events which will have zero probability in certain branches of the universe while also being higher than zero probability events in other branches of the universe. If you take a look at this tree of universes from the very beginning until the very end, we're going to assume they all end in heat death, then what you essentially have are a collection of all possible events that can happen under the current physical constants that we have. We're going to assume that all of these universes have followed the same physical constants. This collection of events is smaller than what is possible across an infinite bubble multiverse, but is larger than what is possible only in our branch of the universe. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, well, why don't we take the many-world interpretation and apply it 
to the other universes that you mentioned earlier that have different physical constants and dimensions. I don't know why you sound like that, but that's apparently what you sound like. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's very, very speculative. We're already hitting an extremely speculative area way before you even said what you just said. Yes, it is possible that our universe is infinite in extent. The data does show that it is possible. Yes, it is possible that that infinite universe is part of a set of universes, bubbles. You want to get more speculative? You can say that this set of universes, this multiverse, belongs to a larger set of multiverses, and that set belongs to a larger set, and that set belongs to a larger set, and so on and so forth. You will keep going on forever. However, there is still a way to answer the question, is anything possible? This is how. There's a reason I mentioned the video game example earlier. If you were to imagine each one of those video games as a universe that belongs to a multiverse called the Unity Game Engine, and that belongs to a set of multiverses that can describe their own video games, their own universes, and then you kept going up and up and up. It's not exactly as this animation shows you, but you can see that there is a hierarchy involved. Eventually, you're going to reach the absolute fundamental property that is describing this prime multiverse zeros and ones. Now, I know they're based on physical systems in our own universe, but let's imagine that this is the fundamental property of everything. In this case, the answer to the question, is anything possible, is everything possible that can be described as part of this fundamental property. Apply the same concept to our reality, and now you have the actual answer to the question, is anything possible with those fundamental properties at the very tip top it's very difficult to really say what they are we live in a universe and we really can't get out of it to find out more i believe that is the best answer to the question is anything possible however you can disagree and with that said thank you very much and i will see you next time